life-giving, life-affirming, nurturing, energizing. Uh, it's the bomb. So the People's Food Co-op was founded in 1970. Uh, it was a buying club mainly with some students up at Western who decided that they wanted a project uh, that would deal with some access to food, good food. Um, and uh, so it was kind of student-led from Western Michigan University students. Um, and they basically started with a buying club in either a basement or a living room. I mean, all the accounts vary. And um, grew and, and built it from there. Uh, in 1973, we incorporated and became a, a consumer co-op under, under state law. We then, um, in 19, between 73 and 76, kind of moved around between different locations and landed uh, on Burdick Street, which is where we were for 35 years. We landed there in 1976. Well, always stayed focused on local produce and things like that as much as possible. Um, in 19, or sorry, in 2000, and Six, we did a renovation of our old store because we were we were struggling to we were struggling financially um, and realized that we needed to do something. We weren't ready to move, which was probably and expand, which was really the ultimate need that we had. But um, what we did was pull everything out of the old store and put it in put it back in in a way that sort of functioned and made sense. Um, and that just built a lot of excellent momentum. The community started looking at us differently and thinking about us differently. And, um, we uh, switched to an ownership structure um, from, an, uh, from a membership structure. We had like an annual dues type structure and we switched to equity um, in 2008 um, and then kept building uh, just through that, you know, kept like building relationships with people in the community and, um, and building trust, I feel like, and gradually got to the point where we were able to identify a property and uh, build a base of capital from loans and equity um, that led us to be able to develop a relationship with the city and with the uh, with local banks and uh, another support organization called LISC, Local Initiative Support Corporation, which may, probably has some work in Detroit as well. Um, they were all really supportive and we were able to mobilize the funds to build this building and, um, and open it last year. Right now we have 1,850 owners as of yesterday. Yeah, I feel like people treat the co-op differently. It's their co-op um, in a way that it wasn't before. Uh, it was before because it was focused on I get my discount. It was more like what's the co-op going to give to me. And now it feels like with this ownership sense, it's much more like we're doing this thing together. And we have a, um, our board came up with uh, the end statement that we have or our sort of vision or the reason we're in, you know, in this community at all is to create access to food that's healthy for people and the economy. And I feel like that's what people buy you know, a share of that. Like that's what they they're they're buying into to that. You know, I think that the co-op now is so much more diverse in terms of who's shopping here um, and who's using it and finding it and things like that than it's ever been. You know, what we realized we were for 33 years we were vegetarian only co-op, um, and we did a survey and unsolicited feedback about you know meat. We had maybe 10% of the survey respondents mentioned that what they really like is to be able to buy meat at the co-op. And so we started down that path of figuring out what does that mean? What kind of meat? How is it raised? And all that stuff. And we brought meat in, not without some um, fascinating controversy and things like that. Some of the old guard, you know, pretty getting pretty, pretty upset. And we held some community forums to talk about that. And to try to get some of that stuff out so we could talk about it and figure out a good way to move forward all together. And um, I think that was largely effective. Um, and we do carry meat now and it's, uh, I feel like we're doing a better job of serving the community what it wants. And they have an option to buy stuff that they uh, feel good about through a business that they own. So that's the big thing that I feel like I've learned. Um, I guess the other thing I think is there, there hasn't been an obstacle that we can't overcome yet. Just have to get creative and figure out. I'll just lay the foundation and say when I started uh, in um, 2003 we had 11 people on staff and now we have uh, 34 people on staff um, and we have a, a department structure so we have a grocery department a produce department front end is our cashiering uh, department um, 
deli and then administration, administrative. Um, and the administrative is basically um, myself, bookkeeping, uh, outreach, and HR. And I'll say right up front that there's lots of overlap in those positions because you know HR is a 10 hour a week position. So our front end manager has 10 hours a week dedicated to HR. So there's, you know, we're still growing and evolving that way um, and will be forever. Um, produce is you know, focused on produce grocery, on mostly on buying and stocking the store. Um, and then deli is all of our prepared foods. Well, so I, I said our, our mission or whatever is, uh, our ends is to create access to food that's healthy for people and in the economy. And I think the first access means you gotta be open. Um, when we were in the old store, we um, we were open like nine to seven, and then gradually, you know, kind of went from uh, nine to eight or something like. Anyway, we kind of had these evolving hours, and when we were working on this project in this building, um, next door to us is Mackenzie's Bakery, and they open at six. And there's a ton of traffic that's going to work by here uh, that early, and. Um, so, you know, in talking to them and thinking about you know, what access means, we realized we should be open probably at 7. 6 is probably not going to be necessary, but let's start at 7. And now we're open till 9 at night, every day, 7 days a week. Um, so we have good coverage, I think. I think we're accessible. In that way. So, and so I um, feel passionately that in order to be empowered as a staff, you kind of need to have all the information. If things get hard, we should all know that, and we should be talking about how to make them better. And if uh, if things are going great, we should all know that, and we should figure out how to, um, you know, how to use that that um, the good direction that we're going in to make life better for ourselves and for people outside of the club. So, uh, how we do that then is um, we use Open Book Finance. It's kind of based on Jack Stack's book, um, The Great Game of Business. And so it's a game, actually, um, in a sense. And we have this big scoreboard where we're looking at sales, and we're looking at labor, and we're looking at waste, so how much food we're writing off every week. Um, and we are looking at the number of owners that have joined and total number of owners we have and the number of... Uh, we, we do um, token sales for of... Um, EBT tokens at farmers, so at our farmers market and at the Kalamazoo farmers market, and we work through the Double Up Food Bucks program too. So we track that. We want to know how how we do in terms of token sales this week. That's access. We want to try to figure that out. How we're doing. Um, so you you know, in a little while, we'll see that that scoreboard in action. And so we look at uh, this week. How did we do? Well, this past week. How did we do compared to what we thought? And then we forecast out and say for this coming week, we know it's. Uh, um, there's a, a big event happening downtown, so maybe we'll think that sales might be a little greater, or we know it's this construction out here right now, so maybe sales are going to be a little slower, things like that. So um, it helps us all to just kind of be more in touch with the rhythm of the business. With the, uh, with the open finance, uh, you know, as opposed to, to other businesses where information about how, how money is being spent or where money is going or how much money is being made is somewhat kept secret, um, I feel like that definitely gives an added benefit to to uh, knowing what's going on uh, from a, you know, I don't want to say top down, but an all around kind of sense. Um, and as far as employees at the co-op, I think some of the reason that people, uh, you know, um, uh, try to get hired at the co-op is not necessarily just for a job, but to support the, the movement of what, what the co-op's mission is in terms of... Uh, being, being a place, um, an organization that's that's about trying to make the community more healthy. One of the things that I learned in the project, in our project of building this, was that uh, help comes in the most unlikely places. So that's a really good thing. They're just like staying really open to the to providence, and that there's that the right things will happen, and and that we can get in our way by thinking that we know the way that it's going to work and then it doesn't work that way and we get frustrated and stuck. Um, so I think just like trust, it, just trust the process is a thing that, I mean that's just something you have to work on every day. I, um, I love a co-op uh, and for all of the reasons that, you know, that uh, Jacob and Chris have mentioned, um, I know that I'm going to get good energy when I go here. Um, uh, 
from from the cosmos and I'm gonna get good food that's going to energize me from the inside out. What I think about is that I know if I get some meat, chicken, that the chicken has been raised in a whole and healthy way. It has been fed good stuff. Uh, I don't know what all that means. Free range or something. Uh, I know that they've done all the, the back checking. Um, and that, that means something to me. I don't mind paying for that. The co-op embodies a community that is teachable and is curious about um, others, those around us, how we can continue to build and deepen and overcome the, the barriers that have you know, been structured into our society since its beginning. And I'm also a core trainer organizer with Crossroads Anti-Racism Organizing and Training. Uh, probably two years ago, two and a half years ago, some folks in relationship, uh, owners at the co-op, came uh, to Erase and said, um, we know that there are some racial barriers and we would like to figure out how to have a conversation around them um, so that we can educate ourselves, educate our uh, the membership, the ownership, um, and just have conversations where we have not been able to have them before. Uh, conversations about race and racism don't always go so well. Uh, and Erase and Crossroads does its work in a way that um, is not about blame. Uh, and uh, the food co-op recognized that it was a part of their end statement to do this diversity and multiculturalism work, to re, you know, to eliminate these barriers, and um, they made a commitment to, uh, to they they made a commitment to sending their staff and uh, owners that were interested and willing to our two and a half day uh, workshop, and so uh, the board and uh, Chris as the GM have um, probably now for about 18 months or maybe two years been regularly we have six trainings at least six trainings a year in the region and they have been sending five or six people to them I think one of the big reasons that people shop at the co-op is because of the awesome people that work here and like knowing that you're going to come in and have a great experience and leave hopefully having a better day than you might have started Shoot the building across the